Welcome to another episode of Reason Explained. Today I have a challenging project for you guys in this interactive tutorial. And what we're going to do is move through this project and we're going to mix down the entire project using the mixer inside of Reason. And along the way, we're gonna learn about dynamic processing, how to use EQ, and how to use filters to your advantage and get the most out of each individual instrument. And by doing this, we're going to shape each individual track and that's going to bring out the tonal characters of those tracks and it's going to make things sound really good because everything's not going to be competing from a frequency perspective. Now, you'll notice that there is a nice spectral analyzer here with a nice chart as well as kind of a nice um, range as far as to tell us what the frequencies are. I'll put a link to that in the description so you can download that as well as the website where I found this at. Also in the description, you'll have the link to the video as well. So let's go ahead and listen to this project that I put together and let's see uh, what we're up against. So you can hear there's definitely some level issues. Um, a lot of the instruments are kind of fighting for frequencies. There's some mud in there and things like that. It doesn't sound terrible, but it doesn't sound great either. And we all get to this point where we make some really nice racks and some instruments sound great, but we're just lacking that next step to take the mix from kind of amateur to more of a professional setting. And that's what we're going to try to do today is show you some of the concepts behind getting to that stage. So we're going to look at each track individually and move through them from a dynamics perspective and an EQ perspective, and we're going to be able to, to shape the sound. So let's start with our kick track, go ahead and solo that, and let's look at the frequency profile of the kick. So it's heavy in the sub range, and not a whole lot uh, in the high range by any means. So what we're going to do is get the low range in control to begin with. So let's go up to our filter section, Turn on the low pass filter and let's take that frequency range over to 120 hertz. And so what we are doing here is everything to above 120 hertz is going to be rolled off by this filter frequency. And what that's going to do is give us just that uh, low end profile. And there it is. So what we're going to do now is use the dynamic section to control that low end. And so what we're going to do is feed that filtered signal into the dynamic section using the filters to dynamic section button. So what it does, if we look at this diagram here, our signal still passes to the dynamic section, but that filtered signal is being sent in as a side chain. And so what we can do now is compress just that filter frequency or that frequency range that comes through on the filter. So let's enable our compressor. Let's also turn the peak button on as well as the fast button. What this does is turn the compressor into a limiter. A limiter is a compressor with a ratio of 10 to one or higher and a fast attack, an instantaneous attack. So let's take our ratio to about 13 to one or so. We'll leave our threshold alone and our release alone for now and we have the fast attack on. Now with our lights here, we can monitor our gain reduction. And since a limiter, what it's going to do from a gain reduction perspective is it's going to shave the peaks off of the sound. And since we sent this filtered signal through, we are shaving off the peaks of the filtered low end. And now we can monitor amount of limiting right here. And so what I want to do is adjust our release by increasing it to hold that shaving of the peak basically and kind of hold that a little bit longer. And you can notice that in the dynamics over here now. All right, so now that we've got that in check, let's listen to the end of that kick and notice there's a long kind of reverb tail going on there. And what that is, is the sample that's being used inside the Kong. And you can look at that on your own time, but basically it, it's a kick that has some reverb on it. I don't want that. So since I'm stuck with the sample and the slice from that Nurse Rex file, what I'm gonna do is use the gate to kind of get rid of some of that and get rid of some of the tail. So let's turn our gate on and let's see what that does to that tail. You can hear how it introduces a level of silence. The reason that the gate does that, the gate has a level that it's going to allow um, your signal to pass. So when your sound hits over that threshold, it is going to open and the, uh, the signal will pass through. Now, when the sound falls below that threshold, the gate is closed. 
And so these different knobs here will control how your gate opens and closes, basically. Now with our threshold, we're basically deciding where the gate should start treating certain sounds like silence. So if we boost the threshold a little bit, what we're doing is taking away even more of that tail. We have to be careful that we don't lose that, that boom of the sub bass as well. So we'll leave it right there for now. And so what we've done is kind of controlled that tail with the dynamics as well. Now we can start to look at the EQ section of the kick and kind of shape that a little bit. Now the tendency that a lot of people have when, you get, when you're dealing with the, um, EQs is that you want to boost frequencies. And that's actually probably the last thing you want to do. What you really want to do is cut frequencies and see where you can get rid of certain frequencies to give things room to breathe. If you d have done my interactive vocals tutorial, you can see some concepts where we use that to our advantage with the vocal echo. So let's go to the 240 hertz range and let's go ahead and cut out some of the mud because that's where you can find mud in a lot of your mixes. It's kind of a muddiness, boominess area. So by limiting the amount of instruments that are in that area, we can kind of increase the clarity in other frequency ranges. So let's turn on the EQ. I've already taken the frequency knob over to as close to 240 hertz as I can get. I'm going to widen the Q slightly to get some adjacent frequencies. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut, and let's cut all the way far left as it'll go, just so we can see what that frequency range is bringing to the kick. So you can hear that it's very hollow and very um, undesirable, really. So what we can do now is play through, and we can introduce that frequency range back in to get the sound that we want. That's great. So we've managed to kind of limit some of that mud or some of that boom that's coming through. We put just a slight scoop in there for the um, for that instrument or uh, frequency range. Now we can look to accent and a good spot to accent for bass instruments or at least to start as a starting point would be around 150 hertz. So let's give that a slight boost and turn bell mode on again to get some adjacent frequencies and let's hear that punch that it brings in. And you can hear that kind of thud with the punch now. So at this point, I think our kick sounds pretty good. We've uh, filtered some of the, the sub range out and sent that as a side chain signal into the dynamics where we are limiting that sub range. We are then using the gate to control the tail. And lastly, we are using the EQ to kind of shape some of the tonal characters of the kick. So now we can introduce our snare and start working on that. All right, we'll take the kick away. And let's look for problematic frequencies in our dynamic range. And you can see right here, we've got a little problem where that one sits well above the rest of the frequencies in that range. Now we're gonna use our chart here to figure out where that's at. So if you do the counting, you'll notice that it's about 10, 11 uh, frequency bands over, which is about 316 Hertz. So let's go up to our snare into the frequency area and let's go over and turn our EQ on and let's go to 316 Hertz. Hold down shift to get as close to that as you can. And what we could do is narrow our Q in this case. So we're dealing with just that frequency range and let's cut it all the way again and let's see what that does and what it's bringing to the snare in that frequency range. So as similar to the kick, it's the majority of the body in the snare. So let's now reintroduce that frequency range and get what we want out of it. Great. So now we've introduced some of that body back in, but we've also kind of helped contain it. Now what we can do is look at our low frequency range. And since we boosted for the kick at 150 hertz, let's make sure that we cut in that range for the snare just to give a little bit of extra room for the kick to breathe. And turn the bell on for adjacent frequencies and have a listen. It's gonna be very minimal. You won't really notice too much of a difference. All right, so now what we can do is introduce some attack using the high mid range area. Let's go over to the seven kilohertz range. And again, we'll give a, just a slight uh, boost to the Q value to kind of widen a little bit to get some adjacent frequencies. And let's go ahead and give it just a little bit of a boost. Just a little bit under two decibels and see what that does to the attack in the snare. 
there's a little bit more pop now with our snare. So at this point now, what we can do is look to limit some of that uh, noise that we've added to the snare. There's kind of like a nice trail on it. What I'm going to do is use the low pass filter to take care of that. Let's turn that on and let's go over to about 11 kilohertz. Actually, about 10, 10 and a half kilohertz is fine. And let's listen to what that does to take some of that noise out. So it almost puts that noise in the background, which is great because we get that nice transient hit and then that noise kind of tails off at the end there. I'm also going to use the high pass filter to just roll off everything above about 100 hertz, 115 hertz and down because we don't need any of that in the snare. That's just going to be kind of added um, artifacts. All right. Last, what we're going to do is use some light compression in the dynamic section to kind of bring out the... Uh, snare as well. So we're going to compress just the transient hit of that. Let's turn our compressor on. We'll leave our ratio at 4 to 1 and our threshold at 12 o'clock right now. Leave the release alone as well. And let's just have a listen and see what that does. We can monitor our gain reduction here. So what I'm going to do is bring the release down. I'm going to bring it down to about 250 milliseconds. We want a real quick release, so it's going to compress real quick and then just let go. All right. Last, we're going to use the gate in a similar manner that we used it for the kick, and we're going to control that tail of that white noise. So let's turn it on, and let's move our threshold up, because we know that it's going to limit that length as we do that. All right. Now let's listen to the kick and snare together and see how they sound. adjust that tail on the snare. Great. All right, so at this point we can introduce the hi-hats now and we can see what we can do with those. So let's again listen to everything all at once. And now let's look at our hi-hats from a frequency profile. So first thing you'll notice is that there is actually some decent low end in the hi-hats, which you probably wouldn't expect because you'd think they'd be a higher instrument. And what that really is is kind of the stick noise hitting the hi-hat. What we're going to do is use the filter section to take care of that. We're going to use the high-pass filter. And let's go over to about 500 hertz and roll everything off after that. And let's see what that sounds like now. You'll see how it basically allows some more crispness in the hi-hat now because we took some of those low frequencies out. I'm going to go ahead and roll off a lot of the air that's in that. So anything after about 15 kilohertz, we can't really hear. So I'm going to go to about 14.3 kilohertz. Oops, and I'm going to turn that on as well, the um, low-pass filter. And that's going to roll off those higher-end frequencies as well. So we've just kind of narrowed the frequency spectrum of the hi-hat just to kind of get more what we want to get out of it. Now what we can do is look at some EQ real quick and see how we can just adjust the um, kind of the sizzle in that. And what we're going to do with that is turn on our EQ and go over to about the 7 to 10 kilohertz range. So we'll go to about 9 kilohertz. And just give a little slight boost as well as the bell because it's the 7 to 10 range. So we want to go ahead and get some of the adjacent frequencies. And let's have a listen. All right, so we kind of brought a little bit of that sizzle out that's in that hi-hat. Now the last thing we're going to do is use our dynamic section in a different way. We're going to leave the compression and limiter off because there's no need to use that in this case. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to use the gate in an expander mode. And what that's going to do is actually introduce some velocity variations to the hi-hat. so you can hear how it starts to sound a little different. It kind of introduces some different characteristics to the hi-hats. So now let's go ahead and listen to all three together, and then we can start working on our send effects to kind of liven the drums up a little bit further.
All right, so we can tell the drums definitely sound a lot better. What's great is we have not even touched our level knobs, which is something that we want to do usually out of the gates is we want to start you know, adjusting our levels. We haven't done any of that yet. We've just controlled the problematic frequencies, thereby keeping the other frequencies at their nice levels that they're already at. So now let's use our send effects to kind of brighten the snare and the hi-hats. So I'm going to turn on send effect 2. I'm not going to do any send effects on the kick because we don't really need to. But what I'm going to do is turn uh, send effect 2, which is a room reverb on the snare. And let's just listen to that in the default setting. If I click the edit button over here in the effects return section, it will take me to that uh, room reverb. Let's expand that out now and click the remote programmer button. Now, we spent all this time earlier with the snare and we were EQing and boosting and cutting and making it sound the way we want to. Now, if we reintroduce this, this reverb on the snare and it's going to reintroduce some of those frequencies that we don't want. So what we're gonna do is actually EQ the reverb and that's actually built into the RV7000. So let's click EQ enabled right there. Now go down to EQ mode and let's adjust our EQ. So we're gonna roll off some of the lower frequencies. So let's take our low frequency knob to about 200 Hertz. And let's just roll that off right now. Now let's take our one parametric that we have and go over to about 7,000 Hertz, which is seven kilohertz, which was the attack that we added to the snare originally. And let's give that a little boost, about a two decibel boost. And let's narrow the cue again, just in that range. And now let's have a listen to what that reverb sounds like. So there's more pop in that. So last, what we can do with the send effect is we can adjust the amount of that reverb we want to mix with the snare. So it adds some nice resonance in the body of the snare. So we now have um, some nice kind of room reverb on the snare. Last, let's do the same thing to the hi-hat. So let's turn on that room reverb for the hi-hat. And it's okay that it's accenting in that kind of um, attack area because we did add the 7 to 10 kilohertz range for the sizzle of the hi-hat. And let's see how that adds some expansion to the uh, hi-hats. Let's scale it back. So it's great. It adds a nice little tail to that um, hi-hat as well as some expansion. And the last thing that we're going to do is set up our pans for the drums, and then we're finished up with processing the drums for this uh, example. Now, what we want to look at is what a drummer would look like in real life and what they're going to look like, or actually what their drum kit is going to look like in real life. So the kick is generally down the center, the snare is slightly off left, and the hi-hat would be a little bit further left than that. So we're going to pan like that, and that would be for a right-handed drummer, which the majority of drummers are. So let's take the pan of the snare, over to about minus three, and let's take the hi-hat over to about minus five. That's going to create a little bit of width with the drums. So now let's have a listen. All right, so now let's go ahead and listen to everything. And what you'll notice is that by just adjusting the kick, snare, and hi-hat, it's actually going to make the other instruments sound better because there is less competing frequencies. All right, so there you have it. That's one way you can use the mixer inside of Reason to kind of get more out of your project. In part two, we're going to start messing with some of the other channels in this and use some of the similar concepts to get those to stand out as well.